Hey everybody, welcome back. So today's going to be geared a little bit towards maybe new snake keepers. Um, you know, some of you folks that have had snakes for a long time, maybe getting a new species that you're not terribly comfortable with, this may help as well. But you'll notice a lot of times in a different reptile groups and so forth, when people are asking for advice, you know, <clears throat> the first thing you'll hear people say is tap train them, tap train them. Well, it's easy to say, but if you're not familiar with the animals, if you're, you know, if you're just getting into it, you really don't know what tap training means. You know, all you know is that, you know, you've got a snake, you've got to buy a snake hook. Um, how do we use it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about when we come back today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So we're going to be looking at a couple different species of snakes here. And the reason why I like to do that is, you know, it, it's a little bit more inclusive. You know, not everybody's got retics. Some people have just got ball pythons. Some people got berms. You know, some people have got a little bit of everything. But typically, if you're just getting started, you're starting out with one species of snake. So, you know, throwing a couple different ones in there can show that it's kind of the same thing for everybody. Um, now, when, when somebody tells you, uh, you know, you need to start tap training, you need to start hook training your snake. Um, I think a lot of people tend to look at that the same way you would look at, you know, how I'm going to house train my dog or something like that. And it's not really the same thing. Um, you know, I've always said tap training is a bit of a misnomer because you're not necessarily training the snake to do anything. Um, all you're doing is you're either recognizing that it's got an active food response or you're just taking precautions to make sure that you know you're not sure whether he's got an active food response or not so i'm going to go ahead and tap him down anyway kind of get his mind working um, you'll hear a lot you know the different trains of thought that your animals will be in and you know there's, there's four basic modes that a snake is going to be in it's either going to be defensive it's going to be thinking it's going to be sleeping or it's going to be in food mode um, you know, and we always want to keep all our animals thinking when we're working with them. That's how we want to approach them. Um, any of the other three modes, we want to make sure that we're transitioning them from that into thinking mode, into that curious interactive mode uh, before we handle them. And it's really, really easy with the hook. Um, you know, I, I guess the best way to say it is that there's just the smallest amount of hook work when you're tap training a snake uh, you're hardly ever using the hook at all you know most of the time especially if you've got a socialized animal like the ones i've got here um, more often than not that hook is just a security blanket for us you know and i still do it myself if i'm in the cage getting my big re big male retake out or something like that and i haven't gotten him really cruising yet and i haven't haven't really confirmed his frame of mind you know, there's a lot of times i'll keep that hook between his head and my hand as i'm reaching back to start touching it uh you know makes me feel a little bit better would it stop him nah he could get a hold of that hook and my arm and everything all in one bite if he wanted to but uh makes me feel a little bit better um uh, but i'm going to show you here like i said i'm gonna go ahead and get some enclosures cleaned up here and i've got my little ball python in here she can be a little bit rambunctious sometimes. And this is a pretty common snake that a lot of people have. Now she has decided she wanted to sleep underneath her paper. So we're just going to go ahead and lift this paper off of there. Yep. Oh. <laughs> and here she is. Hey girl, what you doing? Now you can see the way she's sitting right here. She's curled up. She's been hiding under her paper. She's pretty chalky in there. Looks like she's getting ready to shed here pretty soon. But, uh, and of course, you know, times when they're getting ready to shed, they can be a little bit more irritable than other times. And you may be a little standoffish about going in there without seeing her doing anything 
And this is one of those instances where I probably ain't even going to use the hook. Um, you know, it's still tap training, but, you know, there's no need to get in there and jam this hook up underneath her head, make her uncomfortable. I mean, all you need to do with them is let them know that you're there and pay attention to them and see where their frame of mind goes from there. So, she's there. Just going to touch her a little bit. And she is doing the typical sleepy bull python thing right now. What are you doing, girl? Hmm. See, you can see she's not giving any signs of a food response. Just going to kind of tickle her tail a little bit, see if I can get her moving. See? And I've got the hook down because, you know, the way she's sitting right now, She's just very relaxed. And now she's just trying to get away from me. And this is typically, you know, if they're just casually crawling away from you like that, I mean, it's a really good time to just reach in and grab them. I and mean, I say reach in and grab them. It's a really good time to reach in and pick them up. Grab's probably not the best word. But, I mean, you can see, yeah, she's getting ready to shed here pretty quick. So she doesn't want to be messed with. I'm not going to mess with her too much today. So you guys can see in that instance, you know, tap training. It was nothing more than just tapping her on the back. It was behind her head. She looked like she was really, really mellow. Um, like I said, she's getting ready to shed. And it's just one of those instances where, you know, if she would have turned around immediately and been right on point and started darting around the enclosures and so forth, then, you know, I may have had the hook in there and kind of bumped her head away a couple times or something like that. But that's the extent of it. You know, you don't always need a hook in order to tap train. You can tap with anything. Uh, just kind of depends on the snake and what their state of mind is. And this pretty little girl right here has been with me forever. She's actually went on, and one thing that you ball python owners will find, uh, this is another thing that we hear a lot. You know, it's been three weeks, it's been four weeks since my snake's not eaten. Uh, she went on about a five-month hunger strike uh, last year and just absolutely refused to eat. She didn't want anything to do with it. And here, about the beginning of the year, she picked back up again. And she has got a really hot food response now. As soon as I, as soon as I offer that thing, she's swinging and missing a couple times. Uh, she's just really all over it. And this is such an awesome little girl right here. You can see her eyes just a little bit hazy. And she's getting ready to shed so let's put her back and we're gonna go over here and clean our little berm girls cage out you know my little berm right here when we talk about tap training you know hatchling young snakes yearlings and so forth you know sometimes tap training just means training yourself not to be afraid to get tapped by the snake um, you know these smaller snakes right here especially hatchlings when they first come out of the egg sometimes they just want to hit at everything they want to be left alone they're trying to defend themselves and if they take a swing at you and they get you and it makes you leave them alone it just kind of reinforces to them oh, okay when i'm afraid i can pop at somebody and with somebody like this girl right here now she's really of course really well socialized she actually has never taken a swing at me at all but But she's going to be a really good example for us of you know another means of approaching your snake that someone may call tap training so you guys should be able to see her okay okay so she's sitting in her water bowl right now which is where she's been for about the last week or so she loves it i've actually got to get her a larger one but you can see she's aware that i'm here she's looking at me tongue's flicking at me and all I'm gonna do is just touch her on the other side of her body away from her head and I'm just gonna keep touching her a little bit and just try and get her moving she's actually hissing at me a little bit so this is what one might consider a defensive snake and this is one of those cases where if you've got a defensive snake you can use the hook to kind of keep their head away from you or I've already tapped her and let her know that I was there. 
So she's aware that I'm here. She doesn't want me here right now, but I've got to get her out and I've got to clean her enclosure. So what we're going to do in that case, she doesn't have a food response, so I don't have to worry about tapping her out of that. The only thing I've got to do is figure out how I'm going to change her from being in a defensive state of mind to a thinking and exploring state of mind to get her in an interactive mode. So all I'm going to do is we've got a stalemate right here. She's kind of cocked back a little bit looking at me. Her tongue's not flicking. She's kind of tense right now. So I just want to end this tension as quick as I can. So I'm going to come up behind her head. I'm going to get her moving just a little bit. Yeah, she's really tense today. There we go. And just as gently and as easily as I can, but not taking forever to do it, I'm just going to get her in my hand and get her supported. Okay. So what tap training consisted of for her, again, is I just reached in, tapped her on her backside, you know, away from her head. She got defensive, she got a little hissy, didn't look like she wanted to be messed with. And she's actually been refusing the last, uh, last week, so she should be ready to eat here pretty soon. But I got her as a hatchling. I actually had to force feed her for the first month that she was around, and she started doing really good. She's starting to grow for me. Ain't that right? But see? <laughs> yep. Yeah. What do you think of the nose? If you're going to bite me on a nose, please do it now so we can catch it on camera. Just don't bite me in the eye. I need those. I've got enough extra nose. But you can see, you know, she started out defensive. All you've got to do is just kind of break that stalemate there and get them up and get them thinking. And that's what she's doing now. And she's perfectly fine so let's get her enclosure cleaned up now some of you guys may find yourself in a position where you've got a smaller snake that's in a top load enclosure and i always all of my snakes that are going to get over three feet long are all going to be in front load enclosures um yeah this one right here my little florida king snake not too terribly worried about her because she is really comfortable where she's at right now But if you got one that's kind of snippy and you've got to go in from the top and get them out, you know, there's a couple little things you can do there. One is, and I don't like to just go in and force my way in there with the hook to try and pick them up with the hook if I can avoid it. You know, these aren't venomous snakes. They're not going to hurt you. But what I will do is, you know, I may go down here because she's tucked away in her little spot there. I may go down there and just kind of set the hook in. Set it in next to her between her face and my hand. And let her start moving. There we go. Come on, girl. Yeah. See now she took a little hit at the uh, little hit at the hook. She is. Oh man, she's hitting it again. Okay. Again, this is one of those times. This is a snake that's used to getting handled, but she's also in shed. And she took a couple shots at the hook so those shots that she took at the hook would have been my finger had I just gone ahead and reached in there you know it's not you know avoiding a snake bite we don't we don't always want to avoid it just because we don't want to get bit you know those are those can be traumatic times for the snake uh, you know especially if they if they get in and they latch on there you know they're frightened when they're doing it you know, you really want to just get those episodes over with as quickly as possible and help that, help that snake get as secure as they can. Um, now, I knew she was going to be a little bit grumpy going in there because, like I said, she's getting ready. She seems like all of my animals tend to try and shed around the same time um, because my male retic, my male berm, this girl, my ball python, and I'm pretty sure my little female berm over there is probably pretty close too. But... You know, as you can see, that's a technique. I didn't, I didn't lift her out of there. You know, if you go in there and you start forcing a hook around a smaller snake, especially, you know, there's there's a fairly good chance you can hurt them. And you know, we certainly don't want to do that. Uh, that's you know, even these snakes are going to remember that if you go in there and hurt them. 
So that's why I try and, you know, pick them up with my hands every single chance I get. And typically when she's not in shed, she'll come out of her own volition anyway. All I got to do is open up the lid and she comes right out to play. I know, you're just not happy, girl. So let's put her back and let her chill out. So it wasn't a bad interaction, but it would have been easier had she been in a front loader. Uh, but like I said, you know, you can just use that hook to kind of run interference as you go in there and collect the animal up. That wasn't a food strike that she was doing on the hook. That was completely defensive. She didn't want to be messed with. She didn't want anything in there. And, uh, but then again, you know, that's two examples where you've got a snake that's a little bit defensive at the beginning. And if you just shorten that episode down like that, get them out, get them comfortable. I mean, so, you know, a, a big part of tap training is just being able to, you know, read what your snake's doing and so forth. And we're going to go over here and look at Monty real quick. She wants to come out. And if these videos are helping you guys out, smash the like button, help us out, get subscribed to the channel, get notified when we put stuff out. Um, typically Saturdays at 5 o'clock, we've got live streams going on. Next Saturday, May 14th, we're going to have Rob Faust on with us at 5 o'clock. He actually wrote a book on Nile monitors, and he was um, a huge help with me as I was coming up and I was you know, learning mine. Uh, he helped me troubleshoot a lot of things with him. So he's a really awesome guy. I'm looking forward to talking with him. And then on the 21st, tentatively, these guys have both got really crazy schedules, but we're looking at getting Rob and Jeremy on, uh, formerly of NERD, and now they're down here starting up the uh, Carolina Herp Society and so forth, and uh, really looking forward to seeing where that goes. So we're going to have those guys on the following Saturday. So you won't want to miss that. So now we got a female reticulated python here. She's probably 13, 14 feet. I'm sure if you've seen my videos before, you've seen her in it. Now she's going to be real easy because I already know what her frame of mind is. I could open that door right now, just slide it open, reach in, grab her. Um, she's not concerned about food. She wants to get out. We had her outside again, you know, a couple days ago. And once they start getting outside for the summer, you know, it, they'll be good for a couple days and then they want to come back out so fortunately she's getting ready to eat tomorrow so we got to change her water and you guys will see me do this a lot even though i'm not really too concerned about her frame of mind you know just a little habit what are you doing girl And you can see her demeanor right now. You know, there's nothing food response about that. There's nothing defensive about it. You know, she's immediately wanting to get out and start exploring. Tap training is all about knowing what, what snake's frame of mind is. Sometimes I can't tell what the snake's frame of mind is. And, um, you know, especially with my big male over there. You know, sometimes I want to have the hook there just as a barrier or something as I'm tapping him down. And letting him know I'm there and determining what frame of mind he's in. So you always want to have one available to you. And you never want to just reach in with your hand towards their face or anything like that. If you notice, you know, on the smaller snakes, when I go in there, you know, if I'm reaching in with my hand, I'm reaching around the backside, down the other end of their body. And I'm not just presenting my hand to their face. So if you're one of those newer keepers and you know you recently had somebody tell you well you need to start tap training or you need to start hook training um yeah i mean if you're gonna have snakes you gotta have a snake hook you gotta have the tools you know if you're gonna be a carpenter you need to have a hammer um but i said one thing that i see a lot of is you know people that really overuse their hooks and they try handling their snakes with the hooks and things like that and you just you don't build that bond you don't build that trust with them and you know the, the hook is only there for very brief parts of the encounter sometimes you won't need it but give yourself time to get enough experience before you start determining that you don't need your hook um, you're gonna know you're gonna know when you can read your animal you're gonna know when you can walk up to the enclosure and say oh she wants to come out and roam around 
or you're going to be able to walk by and say, oh, yeah, she's hungry. Bad time to put my hand over there. Um, you know, and if you're not sure, as, you know, we all are when we first start out, that's when you have the hook there. If you're not sure, tap them down a little bit. Just get them moving in another direction. Kind of watch them. Make sure that they're not really jerky, that they're not zeroing in on you and things like that. And then, you know, if we're going to have snakes, we handle them. Yeah, you know, it's not humane to keep these animals in enclosures and not handle them, not take them out and interact with them. So, you know, that hook is there just to get past that initial part of the interaction. And once that's over with, you've got your hands on them and you go into your proper handling techniques. If you've got a snake that's a little skittish, that's a little defensive, you know, you can shift its focus and things like that. You know, if you've got a snake that's trying to turn back around, you're afraid of getting bit, you can turn with them and kind of shift their focus away, get them a little bit more distracted, you can elevate them, things like that. But you really don't want to get into the habit of using that hook any more than is absolutely necessary. Um, you know, that is just a substitute. I mean, just like with the, uh, just like with the king snake over there, you know, that hook was there between the head and my hand. And, you know, she came in, bit the hook a couple times while she's biting the hook. I scooped her up and you could see even in blue, you know, she, once she gets out, she's fine. And those are the encounters that we want to use the hook to avoid. We don't want to have our hand going in there and then getting bit. Stresses the animal out, stresses us out. It's bad threads, you know, the smarter snakes like the retics are going to remember that stuff. So, But anyway, guys, the long and short of it is, is that, you know, if you're a newer keeper, you're going to have people saying, you know, you need to start tap training. There's only, there's only so much good a hook is going to do you in building a relationship with your snake. The only thing that hook does is it gives you an opportunity to avoid bad experiences. Uh, and those bad experiences, 95 times out of 100, are your initial entry into the cage, your initial interaction with that snake, because that is that split second that determines how that interaction is going to go. So you've got to slow down, you just got to look at how they're thinking, you got to look at how they're moving, how they're acting, and you know, that hook is there just to kind of tap them out. Yeah, yeah. Have it there as a security blanket if you need it, you know, between them and your hand as you're reaching into them and stuff like that. But, you know, if that snake's not defensive and it doesn't have an active food, you know, active food response going on at the moment, there's not too many reasons it really has to go ahead and bite you. So I'm sure some of you guys had seen my other videos on hook training, you know, where I'm going in and, you know, I'm going in on Tigger or something like that and I'm waking him up with the hook and, you know, showing everybody how you use it. Well, the reason why I decided to kind of take this approach is, um, you know, like I said, I see, I see a lot of people that aren't really familiar with hook training and tap training. And it, like I said, it's just real easy to get into that mindset of, you know, you've got to train the snake to do something or I've got to do stuff with this hook. I've got it in my hand. I got to use it. And you know, as you can see, that's not always the case. You know, sometimes it's there kind of as a barrier as you're working with it. Sometimes it's there, you know, kind of bumping the head away, making sure that they don't have an active food response going. And like I said, I've got the other videos all in the end screen here. I'll put in uh, one of the videos that I've got from uh, read and retake behavior with my uh, male retake over there. Then you kind of see what I'm talking about there. But if you're just getting started and you got ball pythons, king snakes and stuff like that, you know, even up to the larger snakes, if they're socialized and you're comfortable with them, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, a real minimalist approach with this stuff and it's going to make for better experiences for you it's not going to be poking the snake with a stick and making it uncomfortable or anything uh, so just kind of a little different perspective on it if you guys got any questions at all about you know hook training or different situations and stuff like that man feel free to drop them down in the comments and um you know i'll be more than happy to sit in here kind of work with them as best i can and um you know maybe direct you to some of the other stuff that we've done uh, previously on it so but like i said man my, my whole goal in this whole thing is just to help people have a little bit better relationships with their snakes you know be a little less fearful about getting into the hobby and so forth so you know like i said drop it down in the comments feel free to hit me up and i am out of here until next saturday at 
5 o'clock when we're going to be talking with Rob Faust live. So I'll see you guys then on Intrepid Exotics.